Hello and welcome to The Relevance of Now with William Linville. My name is Michael Connell and I'm here with William. Hey, William. Hey, Mr. Michael. How's it going, buddy? Wonderful. Thank you. How are you? I am absolutely divine and having a blast, buddy. What about you? What's shaking in your world? Lots of new openings. Everything seems to be continuing to be new. Awesome, awesome, buddy. And today, William, uh, one of your clients asked to speak about choice and free will. And really, what is the difference? And they asked a bunch of questions around choice and free will, which seemed that it was very complicated to them. And will you talk about what is choice and what is free will? Sure. Choice is something that you wake up to. You wake up to a space in a place in your life stream, along your journey. And you start to realize that you and you alone have total free reign over what you're willing to accept and not accept in your life stream. You start to wake up to... I and I alone, as the facet of creator that I am, I don't just need to put my head in the sand. I don't need to just keep going through the motions. I don't need to keep enduring rather than living. And that I and I alone have the total freedom here to decide for myself what works for me, what doesn't work for me. And you start to wake up to realize within yourself that there are no have to do's that there's nothing you have to do within and through yourself to make things be a certain way and you don't have to just bury your head and accept what's given whether it be temporary happiness whether it be the roller coaster whether it be emotions whether it be blame guilt resentment blah 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 you have total free will, which comes into having total choice to let that be a truth or a reality for yourself. And when you say, well, waking up to, that's something you wake up to along your journey, what are we waking up to? You're waking up to love. You're waking up to your heart. You're waking up to you as the individualized being as the facet of creator that you are. Mm. You're waking up to the love that you are, the light that you are. No longer just acting, reacting, and surviving. You start to realize, wait, I'm not here to survive. I'm here to live. And you start waking up to your heart. You know, you start to realize within your heart and through your heart that, you know, that you just really don't have to accept any longer what's given to you or being treated a certain way. That now I and I alone as creator expressing through carnate have total complete say-so over what I'm willing to take in, take on, buy into, rather than accept within my life. And is that accepting, you know, accepting my thoughts, accepting my beliefs? Well, it's more about, I would say, like stepping back for a minute, taking a breath and looking at the beliefs that you have made based upon the exponential world, based upon what the parents have said, the church has said, humanity has said, camaraderies have said, the enlightenment communities have said, blah, blah, blah. And waking up to your heart and starting to realize, okay, now I'm watching what I've been doing, buying into, experiencing based in everyone else's perceptions. Now, what about mine? How do I really feel about it? 
Yeah, and it's the distinction of how do I feel about it is important in that what I heard you say is the I you're referring to is yourself as creator incarnate. Totally. You as creator, you start to realize that I don't have to live like this. That what am I doing? Why am I doing it? Why am I experiencing this? Why am I experiencing that? And for a minute, taking a breath and deciding, is this something that I'm willing to accept any longer? Doesn't make it bad, doesn't make it good. It doesn't make others right or wrong. It's just for yourself personally and individually in a state of realizing what works for me. What's the truth of myself? Why am I over here enduring rather than living? Because it's like throwing all these bricks in a flowing river until eventually the river is dammed. And now you're just wash, rinse, repeat. Because you got to remember as creator, you're buying into this. So therefore, you're projecting and creating the same situation over and over and over by default. You were saying you were questioning the thoughts and sharing that something to the effect of am i willing to accept these thoughts in this way of being and how do we dissolve these thoughts these wash and repeat thoughts because they keep coming of course until we resolve them exactly and the thoughts are only derivatives of the belief that you have that you're bought into that draws the thoughts to you so the, the thoughts are nothing. I mean, that's like, psh, whatever. It's what's underneath it that you bought into as creator when you said, I as creator command this to be so. So I as creator command this to be a reality and a truth about myself. That's when you start having the incessant thought forms. Then I would have you take a breath, step back for a moment, Ah, a nice deep sigh. And I would have you look at the thought forms and asking yourself, okay, I see the thought. The thought is nothing but a thought until I react to it or act on it. So as a thought is there, I would have you take a breath, a deep sigh, and ask yourself, the thoughts coming from some bought-in perception that I as creator have commanded reality to be so in a certain way. So now we step back, we take a breath, a nice deep sigh, and we ask ourselves, is that any longer the truth for me? You're not finger pointing. Your mom's your mom, your dad's your dad, your relatives are relatives. They're doing the best they can with what they got. But you're not your mom, you're not your dad, you're not the reality. So now you ask yourself, what's true for me? I wanted to use an example to give people an, an, an example, which is many years ago, I had radiation to my brain and they told me that I had brain damage and I experienced memory challenges, slow thinking, slow talking, et cetera. And for a long time, if I forgot something, I would attribute it to the brain damage. And then I realized through communicating with you and understanding that if I was going to keep holding on to that thought, that my mind and memory was never going to get better. Mm -hmm. And you helped me through that. And so I decided I'm no longer going to hold that belief anymore and from that point if i forgot something i would say oh i forgot something i wonder why i forgot that and maybe look at it and it wouldn't have there wouldn't be a reason why i, ha I forgot it i just forgot it and mm -hmm. over time with that repetition my memory keeps getting better and it's kind of fun, right? Because you took yourself out of your own imposed prison. 
by listening to what others say is going to be the reality for you, the truth. Okay, once that's done, you know, the brain's fried. Okay, there's no coming back and blah, 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 blah. And then we start to adopt this identity that you're broken because your brain got fried with radiation. Now you turn it around. It's like, okay, look, it's no more different than doing a detox cleanse on your brain. Great, your brain. Okay, what's done is done. Now, what can I start to do now for myself? Which it comes free will, whatever you want to call it, to start rebuilding the brain. So, okay, the good minerals, the not so good bacteria, fungi, viruses, whatever. Okay, chemo, burn off all the good and the not so good, the beneficial, not so beneficial minerals in my brain. So now, okay, cool. That's what I have to work with. So I can start remineralizing my brain. And all this time, Mike, I always thought that was a halo. Now I understand why your head glows. <laughs> <laughs> they did say it was my life's maximum amount of radiation to my yeah. brain, allegedly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it is glowing. It's more my angelic presence, not uh, radiation. I didn't know it was green. <laughs> <laughs> but from here, it's like, okay, I now I know what your research says. I know what your experience says. But, you know, that's great for you. But, you know, you just haven't met me yet, speaking of yourself. So you're not adopting their perceptional outcomes. Right. You're expressing and experiencing your own. I mean, now, okay, when we when you forget something, it's kind of like a double-edged sword, right? Okay, I forgot something. Does that mean, is that from the brain being fried, or is it really not holding on to useless data? Because if you can look at your brain and your body, kind of like an attic, kind of like a basement, a place for storage. Now, what is necessary or beneficial for that matter to be put in your basement or your attic? Is it serving any purpose? Because sometimes things just fly right by because it's just not important. Right. And then there's other times that I could forget something that is important. And it's just a matter of looking, was I really there in the moment when I was because listening? When you're not in the relevance of now, there's a lot of things. Just the brain goes dyslexic at times from overwhelm, hyperstimulation, all this other stuff. You reach a point where something, I don't know if I'd say important, I would say might be important for those around you or to those around you, but that's their level of importance. Not that you would, you're sloughing it off, but it's one of those things that you really if you're not present within yourself, yeah, it passes right over, it passes right through, it passes around you, under you. It just doesn't have any sort of ground to anchor in. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of teachings around choice and free will. And, and then if you're trying to think and figure them all out, it's, you go to, <laughs> it, it's a maze. And one of the things I heard you say is that being in the awareness and the consciousness of ourselves as creator incarnate, that's the place that we have free will, we have guidance, we can feel what feels right to do. And then there's a whole nother world, which is based on beliefs and, and judgments and the past where in that level of consciousness, of course, it doesn't feel like you have any choice or free will. No. Eventually, you get to a point in your own waking up process or your own evolution, your own vibrational frequencies, accelerating, accelerating, that, that you start to realize even choice becomes very limiting. Because now you look at choices, but you look at choices past and future. So, okay, if I choose this, this is going to be the outcome. If I choose that, I've seen those over there, that's going to be the potential outcome. 
And that's where it's like taking the whole universe entirely and putting it through a tiny little straw where you're trying to control the whole universe and the outcomes of the universe that now lock you and pigeon you hold back into tunnel vision. That's where it starts to feel like choice becomes a shackle. Because choice, any way you look at it, just to simplify it, it's a whole other game of trying to control the world around you. And then it turns into trying to control yourself. Then it turns into trying to control others to fit into your comfort zone and how limiting and abrasive that becomes because you don't have control over anyone else. You don't have control over the outside world. Although you play with the whole choice to have perception control, but then you outgrow it and you start laughing eventually because now you're becoming one with yourself, the whole universe, looking back at that tiny little filter called the ego that's trying to control anyone and everyone and everything and all out of fear. So you outgrow choice. And then you go into welcoming all the gifts the whole universe has to offer and more. You start burning away the whole ego arrogance that wants to perceive that it's all powerful, blah, blah, blah. And are you powerful? Of course, the ego's not. That's just like a spoiled little child in the back of a classroom throwing spit wads at you when no one else is playing. So it's like, okay, now why would I try to limit myself? by these little choice things that you're trying to control the outcome, but you're missing the whole bride of what the outcome can be because you're putting it through tunnel vision. And then unfortunately, it takes you out of the relevance of the now, or I'll just call it the relevance of you, because now you're starting to impose all these limitations upon yourself. Mm. Well, thank you, Will. That very simply and clearly, uh, you've shared how we can assist ourselves in choosing by questioning and knowing that through questioning and also knowing that we are creator incarnate and, of course, we have a choice. Yeah, and free will is, yeah, you could do whatever you so choose whenever you so choose to do it, but then we start playing with a different balance. Well, you start proposing and projecting balances to fix unbalanced imbalances, and it becomes a real analytical brain fart. Makes me want to get chemo to my brain, just thinking about it. Because from here, it's like, well, you know, everyone else is perfect in their own divinity, right where they're meant to be, otherwise they wouldn't be there. So now, we go beyond all that, letting everyone be whoever they so choose to be in the moment, whether they realize it or not, isn't important. It's just that we're not going there, playing there, nor getting worked up by all the hoopla that becomes so conflicting, containing, and constraining that really just doesn't serve anyone. And then we, then we reach a point of lightening up. Ah, becoming one with all of you, which, and then we start looking at the only thing that is real, which is right here, right now. All the other stuff's just hit games. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. And thank you for um, submitting these questions. William always is encouraging anyone and everyone to email us at contact at williamlindbill.com with new ideas or things that you have questions about that William can address during the Relevance of Now podcast. And thank you for joining us. This is the Relevance of Now with William Linville. Please click subscribe and join us next time. Namaste. Namaste. Have a blast and more fun than ever.